Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to day 43. Um, today we're taking a, a look at the, we're starting into the major second half topic of the year here, which is our intro to definite integrals. Integration will um, compose the majority of the second half of the year here, um, as it's the second big, uh, well really it's the third. We have limits as the first big one, derivatives as the second big one, and integrals as the third big topic. So um, to start off with definite integrals, um, we're going to learn, just like with derivatives, we kind of knew about them in several different ways. The first one we're going to take a look at definite integrals right now as integrals being areas under the curve. So this idea, you'll hear me say it a lot, as I'll just think about this in terms of the area under the curve. What this means is the area between the function f of x and the x-axis. A couple things to know about this area. If this area is above the x-axis, our definite integral, integral will report a positive number, as long as we're going in the right order. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. And if the area is below the, the x-axis, then, the, then the number will come out to be negative. This may not make a lot of sense yet, um, but once we start taking a look at examples here, it'll make a little bit more sense. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sketch just a random graph of f of x, and I'm going to start looking at what definite, definite integral notation looks like to get us an idea. Okay, so here we have a function f of x. If we notice, this function f um, is positive sometimes and negative other times. Sometimes it's increasing, sometimes it's decreasing, sometimes it's concave up, sometimes it's concave down. Um, but here's what we're talking about, or here's what I'm talking about in terms of area, area under the curve. Okay, so I'm going to write what a definite integral looks like. 
And here's what I, here's how I'm going to identify this definite integral. I'm going to talk about a definite integral. First off, that's our notation symbol for an integral. If you notice, it's kind of like a big elongated S. So that S is for summation. We'll talk more about that later. But for right now, that notation right there is going to be our symbol for an integral. Um, to make it a definite integral, I have to go from a number and to a number. And what we do is we say the number from goes on the bottom, the number we're going to goes on, th on the top. So let's say I want to say an integral from negative 4 to 3. I'd put the negative 4 on the bottom and a 3 on top. So what this is saying is I'm doing a definite integral from an x value of negative 4 to an x value of positive 3. Whenever we look at a definite integral, we're going to think of it as normal if the smaller number is on the bottom and the bigger number is on top. If we, if we saw it the other way around, we'll, we'll talk about how to deal with that later, not, not in this video. In this video, I'll always have the smaller number on the bottom and the bigger number on top. Okay, so that's saying do a definite integral from negative 4 to positive 3 of our function, which is going to be f of x. And then we always add on this dx after it. Um, well, I'll, I'll explain more where that dx comes from in a later video. For now, just get used to writing it in there. So again, this is our notation we use for definite integrals. Notice I, got, I always have to have a number on the bottom and a number on top to make it a definite integral. I have to have my function and dx. So what this would be then, this is going to equal some number, okay? And what that number would be equal to is the area between f of x and the x-axis starting at negative 4 and ending at positive 3. So it looks something like this. So whatever this area is, right, let's say the area is, I don't know, 10, then the solution to this definite integral would be a 10. So it's, it's just the area that's between the curve and the x-axis. And the other thing here is, notice how that, that red area in the picture there, notice how that's above the x-axis. That means our answer comes out to be positive 10 instead of negative 10. Okay. Now, what if I did um, an integral from negative 3 to 3? How do you think that would change the answer? Well, if I did an integral from negative 3 to 3, I wouldn't start, if you follow my cursor here, I wouldn't start the integral until right here. And we'd go from here to here. It would be about the same size as the red region that I have right now, but I would definitely get a number that's a little bit smaller, maybe like 9 or something like that, or 8. Okay. If I did negative 4 to 0, again, I'd still get a positive answer, but I know it would have to be less than 10 because I'm not counting all that area from 0 to 3. Okay, let's take a look at another definite integral. I'm looking at the definite integral from 3 to 6. Notice the lower number 3 is written on bottom. The bigger number 6 is written on top. I'm still doing the integral with respect to the same function f of x here. Well, what I want you to think about is what's different about this definite integral as, a pair, as compared to the one that we did first, negative 4 to 3. Well, hopefully what you see here is there's still an area between the curve and the x-axis, okay? But that area is now located below the x-axis. So it only represents this area in here. So 
let's say that that has an area of uh, two. So that blue area has an area of two. Well, then what would be the solution to the definite integral that goes from three to six of f of x dx? Well, now if you say two, just hold on, right? Our rule here is since this area is located below the x-axis, the solution here is actually going to be the integral from three to six of f of x dx equals negative two. Okay. So our solution there, right, if we do a definite integral there, it's going to spit out a number that says negative 2. Okay. What would you anticipate if I did an, an integral from 6 to 7, would I get a positive answer or a negative answer? Well, the integral from 6 to 7, we can see in our graph here, from 6 to 7, our curve is above the x-axis. So that, that area is going to be above the x-axis as well, which means that would give a positive answer. Okay. Now, here's my question for you, kind of looking ahead question. What if I did the integral from negative 4 to 6? I've already looked at that, right? Well, from negative 4 to 3 gave me 10, and from 3 to 6 gave me negative 2. What do you think would be the answer then for the integral from negative 4 to 6? Well, again, that integral has some area above the curve that will count as positive and some area below the curve that will count as negative. And we would just add them together. 10 plus negative 2 would give us 8. So that's what we're doing, and we'll, we'll figure out how to actually perform a definite integral, right? But I just want you to get the familiar today with the concept of, of it being the area below the curve. We're also going to learn about integrals as being antiderivatives, right? We're going to perform them by doing the opposite of what a derivative does, okay? But for now, I, I really want you just to focus on thinking of it as the area under the curve, okay? Now, some of the questions that will come up on your AP exam, they'll never even tell you what f of x is, but they'll give you some areas and you're able to answer the question. Or they'll give you linear things or circular things, and we can answer those questions um, really without even knowing how to do an antiderivative, as long as we conceptually understand definite integrals. Let me show you what I mean by that. What I want you to do is go ahead and pause the, the video really quick and sketch this graph into your notes. Okay, and what we see here is a graph. We're going to label this graph f of x. Here's our f of x graph. And what we're going to do is, um, I'm going to have you solve your first definite integrals and see if we can figure out how to do this um, correctly. And even though we don't know how to perform definite integrals yet, we can still answer it based on um, conceptual. Okay, so here's the first problem for I, that I have for you. So my first question is this. I want you to perform, and then that big S means definite integral, or that big S means integral. So we're going to do an integral from negative 6 to negative 1 of f of x dx. And again, I should be comfortable with the, the smaller number being on bottom and the bigger number being on top. 
right? Negative 6 is the smaller of the two numbers, so it's on bottom. So I just want to find the, the definite integral from negative 6 to negative 1 of f of x dx. Well, any ideas how we do this? Again, let's think about um, our definition. It's the area under the curve. So it's the area between the function f of x and the x-axis. When we look at this from negative 6 to negative 1, we can see negative 6 would be an x value right here. Negative 1 would be right here. So I want to find the area in here. Well, since this is just a linear graph here, right, basically all I have to do here is find the area of that triangle that's sitting right there. So when I look at that, I say, hey, I can figure out the area under the curve because I know how to find the area of a triangle. I know it's base times height divided by 2. So I'll take a look. How big is the base here? Well, I've got a base of 1, 2, 3, or 5. So its base is 5. Its height is 1, 2, 3, 4. I know that 5 times 4 is 20. But remember, it's a triangle, so 5 times 4 is 20 divided by 2 makes 10. And again, you have to ask yourself, should this be a positive 10 solution or a negative 10 solution? Well, again, where is that triangle located, above or below the x-axis? Well, that triangle is above the x-axis, so my answer should be positive 10. Yeah. Two. I want the um, definite integral from negative one to four. So that's of x dx. Okay, so once again, we're looking at a definite integral here, but this time we're starting at negative one and we're going to positive four. Once again, this is simply just a triangle. But what I need you to know, what I need you to notice here, is this triangle is now below the x-axis. So whatever I get for the area of the triangle, I'm going to report the negative, right, the opposite sign, right? So I'm going to, if I get 6, I'll report negative 6 for that region. So, again, I'm going to find base and height to divide by 2. I'll find the other divide by 2. My base of this triangle goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I got a base of 5. And I've got a height of 1, 2, 3. So to find the area of that triangle, then I would do 5 times 3, which is 15, and divide by 2, which would be 15 over 2. Or you could call it 7.5 if you wanted to. But what's important here is my answer is not 15 over 2. My answer is negative 15 over 2. Okay. And again, this negative is because that triangle is below. Okay. My next question is going to be, um, what is the integral from 4 to 10 of f of x dx? Again, looking from 4 to 10, you can think of that as one shape. Hey, that's a trapezoid, right? If you remember your formula for area of a trapezoid. You can use that, which would be the height times the average of the bases. Or you can just split it into two shapes that you know. Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what it looks like um, splitting it into two shapes that you know. So I'm going to look at from 4 to 10. I'm going to look at first 4 to 6, this triangle right here. Right? That's got a base of 2. And a height of 1, 2, 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So 
So that gives me an answer of three. Then from six to 10, I have, now I have a rectangle. So I've got a base of one, two, three, four, and a height of one, two, three. Four times three is 12. I do not need to divide by two because it's no longer a triangle, it's a rectangle. So I can just leave it at 12. And I can add up those two areas. It's an area of three and an area of 12, which makes my answer 15. Again, it's a positive number here because that area is entirely located above the curve. Okay, one more question for you. My last question for you here is the integral from 2 to 6. Now, if we notice that, okay, from 2 to 4, my shape is below the curve. From 4 to 6, my shape is above the curve. Right? So we just have to be a little bit careful here. 4 to 6, I already found the area to be 3. That 2 to 4, right, that's, that is another triangle that's a 2 by 3. So 2 times 3 is 6 divided by 2 is 3. So those are congruent triangles, right? An area of three and an area of three. So again, this area right here, that's an area of three. But in terms of a definite integral, it's going to count as a negative three. So I've got a negative three on one side and a positive three on the other. What do you think will be the solution then for the integral from two to six of f of x dx? Well, if you guess zero, then you're right. So that's how we use the idea of definite integrals as areas under curves to help us solve problems. All right, I'm going to have another, another video for you guys coming on Tuesday. So stay tuned. Um, I'll have two videos for you this before uh, Wednesday's class. I uh, hope everybody has a good uh, MLK day tomorrow, and I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Two chains. Bye.